Welcome everyone and thank you for joining Painting with Picasso's Grapevine. My name is Leanna Hahn and I'll be your host for today. I have with us today kind of a special surprise. I have my lovely niece, Kennedy, here. Uh, Kennedy Hahn, she's visiting us this week from uh, North Carolina, from Greensboro, right? Awesome, Kennedy. Is there anyone you want to say hi to? No. No? <laughs> she's a little nervous, so we're going to have some fun today. I've drug her along and we're going to do some really cool paintings. Um, Today we're going to look at this very fun, loving piece painting, I think appropriately selected for a young girl. You're 10 years old, right? Awesome. Very cool. Um, this is going to be very loose, very fun. Um, the lines are very broad. They're not specific. This is going to be a lot of background painting. Then we'll kind of move into our little peace sign in the center. We'll kind of finish it up with a loose little outline. And it's just a nice exercise in brilliant colors kind of reminiscent of the tie-dye, a little bit of the 60s, but it'll be nice and fun, lots of uh, enjoyment for everyone. So as always, we're going to st start out by kind of talking about how many paints we have on our palette today and what colors they are. We've got our uh, green, our cad green, we have cad yellow, we have phthalo blue, we have red, we have black, and of course we have white. And as always, we're working with acrylic paints, so that means they're going to dry really, really fast and you will have a nice completed painting at the end of our session. Um, as always, do make sure you have a cup of water. We're going to be using that to clean off our acrylic paint as we go in between colors. And then for today, we're going to start off really just with two paint brushes. This is going to be real simple, easy, quick moving, fast pace. I have a number six filbert and I have a number one filbert, so nice and easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to kick it off by taking our number six filbert, a nice big one, dip it in our water, kind of open it up, wake it up, and dab it off on our dab rag. Now, I'm going to kind of give um, Kennedy here some guidance as we go through. Now, we have started off with a little bit of a help. Both of us have some pre-sketches. Makes it nice and easy as we're kind of going through here. Um, I'm going to probably start with our red. So the reason I'm going to be going with the red is because because of these brilliant colors that we have here, the placement of them is, is a little bit strategic. We're not putting any yellow, any blue next to each other because that makes green. So we're kind of making sure we put the colors next to each other. They're going to be brilliant, vibrant, and really enjoy it. So we're going to start out with making just a rough ring. Kind of a loose rough ring around. What we're doing here is just kind of giving ourselves a little bit of a baseline of where our red is going to go. So. Once we get that ring around, let's go ahead, grab some more of our red paint, and we're going to get going. So our strokes are going to be very consistent right next to each other. We're going to move in the same direction, constantly keeping our strokes pointing towards the outside of the canvas, and just adding some red. So we're going to get that base color all the way around. Now feel free to go ahead and add some more paint on your canvas. If you're seeing the dimpling coming through, that's your canvas telling you, hey, add more paint. And that nice little line kind of helps me keep a consistent circle as we're moving around. Now I'm starting my strokes from the inside and moving out. So it all has that same feel all the way around. Now, if we happen to run off the canvas, that's awesome, no problem, just continue up. This is going to be just a fun, loose, crazy kind of 60s piece painting. You remember the 60s, don't you? Nope. <laughs> Now the reason I'm also starting on the outside is because the inside of our peace sign, that's going to be black. So because of that, it's going to be able to hide anything that actually gets inside those peace signs. So nice and easy to make any corrections. Now while Kennedy is kind of working on her red, I'm going to go ahead, wash off my brush, and I'm going to continue inside, I think. I'm going to just stay with the red. I was going to move, but I think I'm going to stay with the red. Nice job. Very good. All right, go ahead, grab some more red, and we're going to move to the inside of our peace sign. And we're going to give ourselves another little ring. Now, if you want to make a little ring first, just to give yourself a place to follow, a line to follow, feel free to do that. And it's just a circle ring, just kind of keeping it inside.
and using that same stroke, following that circle ring all the way around. Very nice. Now I kind of made that last part of that ring a little bit closer because what we're going to do is we're going to start to spiral it. So I'll kind of give you this last piece of the ring and follow that one. So we'll kind of start to spiral it inside. Just kind of make it a little crazy and fun. And again, don't worry if you got anything that went inside those black lines because black covers just about everything. All right, so officially, looks nice, perfect. Officially, I'm gonna go ahead and switch into our blue. So go ahead, pick up your little cup and wash it off. Kind of swish it around a little bit and then make sure you dab it off your dab rag. So for the folks at home, when we're dealing with acrylic paints and you're going into your water, um, one of the biggest um, issues we run into is if there is too much water left on your paintbrush, when you take it back to the canvas, water will actually, the water drips will actually strip off the paint. So we try and avoid it by making sure we always dab off our, our paintbrushes in the dab rag, but we can fix it, but it makes it a lot easier and we don't have to. So, all right, so go ahead, grab some of that beautiful phthalo blue, and we're gonna go through Hmm, we're going to add one layer right underneath the red. So let's go ahead. And in some cases, it may go into your black ring. That's okay. Probably the biggest thing you want to make sure that you do is give it a nice light stroke as it's moving into your red. So let it kind of flow inside the red. There you go. Very nice. And like our other ring, we're just going to let it flow all the way around. In some cases, it may be right next to our black line, in some cases not. We'll leave a little space there so we can throw in some green. And that's what's nice about this painting. It doesn't have to be exact. It can be different every time you paint it, and it can be fun each and every time. Now as well, if there's something for those viewers at home, if you would like to change up the colors, this is one of those paintings that you can do that. So the only cautionary tale is making sure which colors you put next to each one. So if you're actually at home, like I say, I always use the blue and the green, um, or the blue and the yellow as an example, because that makes green. So in the right cases, that looks beautiful. In some cases, not so much. So be conscious of that. Excellent, nice job. Now look at this, she's keeping up. All right. <laughs> so let's take that blue and let's go inside our little piece sign and then continue underneath the red. Especially in these tight little corners here where it's kind of feeling like a pizza pie, you're gonna have a little bit more that's going into your into your black area or your peace sign, no big deal. Very nice. Once you're done, so done with that, I think we'll, it's safe to say we can wash off our paintbrush and we'll move on to our next color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to the green. Now the green is really going to be up to you where you want to place this. I think I'm gonna keep it underneath the blue because it's a nice strong pigment and it'll show up. Um, in theory, the best way to approach this painting when you have the leisure of time is give this, this, at this point, give it some time to dry. So, because when we come in on top of it with the green, it'll be more brilliant when the colors underneath are dry. Right now, we're gonna have a little bit of bleeding because, of course, it's wet. So, it won't look exactly like the way, what you can achieve at home, but it'll look pretty darn good still. All right. Ready with green? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So you're gonna get a little of that blue kind of dragging in there and that's okay. Just kind of keep going back to your palette and refreshing it with more green paint to keep the color still brilliant. And then we'll just keep going down. 
If you get a little bit too much blue, just kind of wipe it off. Grab some more of that green paint and keep going. Again, these are wraparound canvases. So I'll just kind of remind the audience, if you want the option of hanging this up on your wall, we always will take paint and wrap it around. That way it just kind of have a, has a finished edge and you can put it up on your wall. Today we may not get to that point, but it's just a nice item to keep in mind. Very nice. All right, while Kennedy is continuing around the side, I'm gonna go ahead and take that green, doing the same thing, moving inside. Our little spots are definitely getting nice and tight here. So just adding a little bit of green, kind of letting it run into the black, no big deal. And as always, don't forget, take a step back, take a look at your painting. So I'm painting here to the side, I'm kind of bouncing around, but to really truly get perspective, you have to take a bit, at least about 10 steps back and take a look at your painting. Does it look right? Do I need to add anything? Um, make sure you got some nice coverage, make sure you got good coloring. A lot of times when you're so close onto your painting, you cannot see the perspectives. Now we had a pre-sketch out on that, which made it kind of easy. But when you're drawing and you're painting and you're creating an image, it's best to take a few steps back, make sure that you can see it, your proportions are good before you move on. All right, feeling good? Awesome. All right, let's go ahead, wash off our green, get rid of that into our water. Make sure you swish it out really good because we're gonna be going into yellow and yellow is of course a very um, light pigment. So that we don't wanna drag any green or blue in there right now, although once we place some yellow here around, yellow and or, uh, yellow and red makes what color? Orange. You put orange. Yeah, orange, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's kind of comes with that whole strate strategy of which two colors do you place next to each other. All right, so instead of going down up, this time we're gonna go top down. So, and, the, and that is part of the reason why I started with the red, because I wanted to give that the longest time to dry. So when I introduce yellow next to it, we have the chance of remaining yellow and not automatically turning orange. So let's start from the outside. Kind of drag in. And you're gonna activate a little bit of that paint even if it is dry right now, which is no problem. We're just gonna move around. I put the most pressure where I first place my brush and then I kind of flick it off the canvas very lightly as it touches the red. And we just kind of keep moving around. Some of our edges here are already filled in so no worries. So you'll kind of jump around probably a little bit closer to your corners. Feel free to go ahead and fill in those corners. This is gonna be the last color that we add. Kennedy is doing rocket awesome, especially in her speed. First time doing it, so nice job. Again, if you kind of get a little too much of that red activated and drawn in, just make sure you, wipe, you can wipe it off on your, on your palette here. You can go back to the water, rinse it off, make sure you come back with a little bit more brilliant yellow to start again. All right. Now, probably suggested um, a good idea is to go ahead and wash this off, even though we're gonna be staying with the yellow. Let's go ahead and get rid of some of the red or the orange that may have built up already. Dab it off on our dab rags. And let's continue with the yellow on the inside of our little peace sign. Again, 
We're going to be making just really tiny strokes. There's not a whole lot of room left here. We're just filling in those empty spaces. So, Kennedy, what's your favorite sport that you play? Soccer. Soccer. Awesome. What's the name of your soccer team? Do we have a team name? I'm not playing right now. The season's done. Oh, okay. All right. All right. Again, same stroke technique. We're really not changing it up. Just moving in to the, from the top down to the center. The direction changed, but the strip style did not. And as always, once you go ahead and you've got all of your spaces filled in, again, take a step back, take a look at your painting. Is there anything that's missing? Well, the paint is still nice and moist, and it's very pliable. Make sure you fill in anything that you feel comfortable or uncomfortable with to get to what you want. Then at that point, Perfect, go ahead, wash off our paint brushes. Let's dip them, um, dab them off on our dab rags. And then we're gonna be moving into our black and we're gonna fill in our peace sign. So pretty easy. Like I said, black really pretty much covers up anything. So this is a nice opportunity to crisp your lines, make them much more defined, more accurate. And if for some reason you've kind of messed that up, even at this point, when we come in with our white loose outline, it has the same effect. So it's very loose, it's very free, it's not tight at all. So what it's doing is just kind of creating a lot of movement on the canvas. So your eye isn't drawn to whatever error that you've actually made. It's a nice hide all. So you notice I started with the inside, just to give me some nice tight lines. Then I'm coming around on the outside. And I'll tell you what, Kennedy, I've had my back to you quite a few times and you have done fabulous. Do you like to paint? Kind of. Yeah. I think we have some paintings on our agendas, probably later today or tomorrow. So just continuing around, make sure you fill that all in. Again, this is gonna be the point where you wanna make sure that that black has some really good coverage. So if there's any white dimpling, make sure you go over that a few times, get that covered. and then finish the full outer circle. Nice. All right, we're in the, in the uh, finishing uh, stages here. Last stroke that we're gonna do is with our white, and we're gonna be using a very tiny brush, so go ahead and grab that, dab it off on the dab rag. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of give us instructions while you're still finishing up your black. So basically, just go ahead and grab some of that white on the very tiny brush, and very loose. We're just gonna do quick stroke outlines. And it's okay if they don't exactly match the sides or the edges of your, of your peace sign. They're intended to be loose. They're intended to be not accurate. So it's just kind of a loose, wide outline. And what it does is it gives you a couple opportunities to make multiple strokes. So your eye is not really following one particular stroke, it's following a series of strokes. Interestingly enough, your eye will complete the painting where your paintbrush doesn't have to. Just kind of finish that around. Oh, 
almost done. Last little curve. There you go. And again, take a look, take a look at your painting, step back, make sure proportions are good, coverage is great, tweak it as you may, and last but not least, put your initials on the bottom. Be proud of this fabulous creation that you've just made. Hopefully you've enjoyed what you saw today. Hopefully Kennedy has learned some new techniques as well and enjoyed it. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about this type of painting, send us an email to info at Thank you for joining us. Thank you.